And a wonderful warm welcome, grade tens. Welcome once again to one exciting life science lesson. You know it's never a boring, boring subject. Um, make sure, please, you know the usual rules. Have all your textbooks and all your resources handy because we are going to ask questions so that you're able to answer them, that you don't get all lost. So all your, all your resources, your textbook, everything open, your notebooks, and everything that you have, you have in front of you. Okay, guys, so what are we going to do today? Well, if you tuned in last week, you would have seen that we, we started with a new section. We looked at the human skeleton. Right, and now today, what we're going to look at, as you can see, we're going to look at joints. And I'm going to get into the, the, the whole concept of a joint a bit later. But what we're going to do is we looked at, and I know it sounds quite weird that we started with the skeleton last week, but we're going to look at the structure of bone this week. But what we're going to look at is this whole concept of a joint. Now, if you can remember last week, we started with the human skeleton. We looked at all the different bones. So now what we're going to do this week, we're going to see that when we look at our skeleton, bones are joined together. So we're going to see that bone joins with bone. There's a whole different varieties, and we're going to look specifically right at those kind of joints. So what we're going to look at today is the structure of bone, number one. And you're going to see, I hope that you've got it all handy there. We're going to go back to our mammalian tissue. So I hope you've got your mammalian tissue notes handy because we're going to have a little bit of revision there. Then we're going to start with the joints and we're going to look at that a joint is made up of a whole different kinds of tissues and we're going to look at what those tissues entail. And once again, you're going to see that it links back to our mammalian tissue section. Right, guys, and the one thing I keep on telling my grade 10s as well, you have this whole concept that everything that you learn, you put away in boxes, and you think that one little section, there's a box, and then another little section, there's a box, and you need to realize that what you are learning is a bottom step. So we looked at mammalian tissues earlier on, so we started off with the cell, then we looked at how we combine cells together to form tissues, we looked at the tissues, right, and now we are looking at putting all of those different tissues together to form different organs and those organs fit into a different system which makes an organism. So when we look at things you need to understand that it's almost we are going up different levels. And then the new work which we're going to look at today we're going to see that there are different types of joints. Now the first thing that we need to start off with is just a quick recap of what bone tissue looks at. Now, I hope you've got everything handy. You've got your resources and you've got your textbooks open because I'm going to ask you right to quickly, here in front of me is a diagram of bone tissue. And I'm even telling you that. I'm not even going to ask you what it is. And I'm going to give you one minute. And all I want you to do, one minute's a bit long, I know, but I just want you to quickly see if you are able to label right structures A, B, C, and D. You've got one minute. It starts now. Okay, guys, I hope you were able to find all the answers. You went back to your mammalian tissue section, right, to be able to answer these questions. Now, if you have a look at the bone tissue, I when we did the mammalian tissue, what I always wanted you, right, to understand was the concept of bone always had these concentric rings, right, these circles. Now, 
when you label them, I think maybe the easiest one for you to label would it be number B, because you might have gone straight to the center, right, which is your Haversian canal. And remember, in the Haversian canal, we're going to find all our blood vessels and our nerves, because the bone is living and it needs to be able to get nutrients. Number C is almost like a hollow, and we know that when we get to bone tissue, right, what do we find? The tissue, because it's so hard, has to be in a hollow. So the bone cell, what did we call it, an osteocyte or an osteoblast, you might have used either one of those, okay, and it's within a lacunae. A lacunae, if you can remember, it was in a little hollow. Number D is showing us these different rings. Now, those different rings are called my lamellae. And the last one is number A, is all these little black lines. Now, if you can remember, bone tissue is hard, but we need to get canaliculi, all right? So canaliculi, we need to get all the nutrients and everything through to the bone. Okay, so now that you have looked at bone tissue, last week we looked at just the different bones of the skeleton. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a long bone. So let's say, for example, let's take a humerus. We're going to cut it, a transverse section. So I'm going to cut it in half from top and bottom, and then we're going to see what bone is made up of. Hey okay, guys, so if we have a look here, there are a few terms that are more important than others. The first thing when we get to a bone, and um, in my class I made my, my kids, um, um, we, experiment, we experimented, we took a chicken wing. And if you take a chicken wing, you can even use your, your drumstick or anything that you need. I know your parents don't say play with your food, and I'm going to say play with your food. You actually can identify all the different types of mammalian tissue. So imagine now we've got, let's use our drumstick, it's my favorite part of the chicken. If we've got a drumstick, now you will notice if you have a look at it, so next time you have a piece of chicken have a, and, and you have a bone, have a notice, especially the leg, right? have a look at it. And what you would notice is that you've got a top part that is quite rounded. Okay, You have a bottom part that is also quite rounded. And then you have a longer part over here. Okay, So if I was to draw, and if we usually draw a bone, but we generally tend to draw something like that. Now those, the top parts and the, the, the two that protube right at the bottom over here, we call those the epiphysis. Right? And it's another word for almost saying it's the head of the bone. Okay? Then the next one, the shaft, this long portion over here, that is called the diaphysis or the shaft. I would prefer that you use the term diaphysis. Now, if we have a look at the bone, right, bone tissue, and I'm going to use, right, if you have a look at the diagram over here, this bone over here is called spongy bone. And what does that mean? If I was to look at underneath the microscope when we did bone tissue, and I look at bone, I'm going to see it looks like a sponge. There's lots of spaces. Whereas the dialysis, if you have a look here, we say that it's compact bone. So if I was to draw the haversian canals, they would almost be so close together. Now I wonder if you can realize why. Okay, here, the shaft over here is my weight bearing. Right? That's where I'm going to put all the weight in it. And if I'm going to put all my weight on it, what do I want? I want it to be nice and strong. Whereas the ends of the bones, the ends of the bones, I'm not going to put so much weight on, so I don't need it to be that strong. What else am I going to find, all right, in my bone? I'm going to say in my bone first. Let's go across to this diagram. Now, inside a bone, you are going to find what we call bone marrow. Okay, bone marrow. And in, a, a long bone is hollow, and inside is this bone marrow. Now, the bone marrow, we have yellow bone marrow and red bone marrow, and that's your, your embryonic tissue. How can I say? This is the tissue that grows by mitosis. And what it look, grows, it, it, the mitosis all right, um, occurs in here, and it doesn't grow more bone. Right? What it does do is that it actually, what is it? I'm sure you can remember, okay, my blood cells. 
So what forms in my bone marrow? Usually my white and my red blood cells are formed here in my bone marrow. Also, if we have a look at a, at a bone, you will see sometimes there's like an imaginary line, right, that goes across, right, across the bone. And this is called your epiphyseal line. And what it is, is this is where you grow. How do I mean by that? The tissue inside here, again, can divide by mitosis. Right, so when it divides, we put more bone tissue. And if we put more bone tissue, what happens to your bone? You get, they get longer. And obviously, you are then going to grow taller. Now, a few words that you also might not be familiar with is a periosteum. A periosteum, if you have a look over here, is a connective tissue covering the bone. Right? It's, it's very simple. If you want to, things to stay in their place, we are going to cover, and we call that the connective tissue a cover. Obviously, bone needs to have blood. Now, when you are busy with your chicken wing, all right, your chicken wing or your drumstick, what you will do is you'll notice on the top here, I'm going to do it in a different color, on the top of the long bone here, go and have a look, is a white, very smooth, all right, very smooth substance. And that is going to be your cartilage. All right, and it's specifically hyaline cartilage. All right, let me see if I can, let me put it here. I'm going to put it at the bottom. I'm going to draw it here, and it's much easier. You're going to find it at the top, at the bottom. All right, specifically hyaline cartilage. Another word that they're going to use very often, they use the word articular. Now, articular means to join. Now, if you feel it, if you take your chicken wing, right, and you gently feel it, what, it, what are you going to notice? That it's very, very smooth. And that is going to be very important when we start to now bring up a whole concept of a joint. Because when you have a look at a joint, we're going to look at it, it's when a bone meets bone. So let's start on, off with the, this concept of what a joint is. Okay, this is very important. That is your terminology. That is your terminology, right? And what is it? It says joints are formed where two or more bones meet. Okay, so we're joining, and I'm sure that is understandable. We have two structures, and we join them is where they meet. Okay, and what can happen at a joint is we're going to see a joint, all right, can allow movement or not necessarily all depends how we join something. Now, when we look at a joint, when we look at a joint, right, what we're going to see is that there are different kinds of tissues that are going to be found around a joint. So we've got two or more bones, okay, so we know that bone tissue is involved, right, but we also need the joint to have other tissues around it to stabilize it. We don't want that joint, all right, to always dislocate to come out of its joint. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you two minutes. I'm going to show you, right, two, well, four types of tissue. All I want you to do now is to identify, right, the types of tissues. And I want you to tell me what do you think their function is. So let me show you here. Okay. I'm going to give you four tissues. You have got two minutes. After that two minutes, you are going to have a quick break. And when we come back from that quick break, we're then going to see if you were able, right, to identify all the different tissues. Okay, your two minutes start now.
Okay, guys, I hope you managed. I know some of them are a little bit more difficult, but we're going to go, you're going to have a little bit of extra time now because we're going to go straight to a break. So if you didn't finish, you've got a little bit of extra time. I'm going to see you back soon, soon. Welcome back. I hope you had a good stretch. You went to get some water and you're all ready to start. How did you guys find it? I know it's sometimes being able to identify the different tissues is quite difficult. So let's see how you did. The first one, right, if you have a look at the, the big large cavities here with the little cells and there's no fibers, what I was looking for was for you to identify hyaline cartilage. And when we come to our joint, hyaline cartilage is going to write the function of the tissue. The function of the tissue right, is to, to cover bones, to lube, we're going to see to, um, to prevent friction. That's the one that I'm going to want to concentrate on now. And as I say to you, if you can think of your chicken bone, the two bones that are going together, if this hyaline cartilage is at each end and they rub across each other and it's nice and smooth, it's going to excuse me, it's going to make movement much easier. Now these tissues, the next two, might have been the ones that you battled with the most, but I wanted you to show the color might be right, very misleading. But what this tissue was, what I was looking for, was your white fibrous. And yes, I know it's red, but we, we have to stain it to see it. Now my white fibrous tissue, what I was looking for over here, was right it makes up my tendons it makes up my tendons and what is a tendon I hope you can see where we are going with this a tendon joins joins have a look there joins a muscle to a bone right a tendon joins a muscle to a bone now you can see lots of fibers what are we looking for here we're looking for strength. Okay, they go in the same direction and the fibers are very, very tight. The next one, the color, might have given it away a bit. I'm hoping that it did. But what you would notice is, other than the color, we would see the fibers are not very, are not very definite. Okay, they look a little bit tangly and that would be your yellow elastic, right, connective tissue. And we're going to find those in our ligaments. All right, and now if we look at again what a ligament is, a ligament, ah, oh, there's this word again. Do you see how it keeps on popping up? It joins bone to bone. So we have, if we go back, we're going to see that the tissue that lines goes over the ends of the joints to help when the bones move, right, so that they don't prevent each other from moving right smoothly. We've got these white fibrous tissues which make up our tendon, right, and that is it where a muscle goes, right, joins to bone. And uh, our next one is our yellow elastic, and that makes up our ligaments. And remember what the function of a ligament is, bone, right, attaches to bone. I hope you guys can see where this is going. Okay, and the last one is your skeletal muscle. I hope you noticed the fibers and the multinucleated cells, right, and they all rang the cylindrical tubes that went in one direction, right, and that is skeletal, or some of you might better know it as striated, which is stripes. Now, what have I, what was my purpose of looking at all of these different tissues? Now, the different tissues, when I go, when I come to a joint, Right, as we're going to have a look over here, a joint, how we classify a joint is how, how much movement does it allow, okay? How much movement? Now, bone is going to, a joint is where two bones meet, okay? But we don't join the bones together. We need to glue them together with something. Okay, so when we, get, when we talk about our types of joints, what we're going to classify them is how, what, what amount of movement do they, right, do they allow? So when I've got two bones and I join them, 
right? Those, there's other tissues that's going to join it. And that is why it was, that's why you guys needed to have a look at the other tissues that are going to make up a joint. <laughs> okay, so joints, we, we divide joints into three groups all depending on their amount of movement. Now we're going to start off with the first one is a fibrous joint. Now if you have a look at a fibrous joint and have a look at the place in the body where that we look at, when we looked at the, the skull last week, we find these very, if you have a look here, right, these very zigzaggy marks along the skull. And what those are, are called sutures. Now, those sutures, have a look, what is the definition of a, of a joint is where bone must meet with bone, okay? So here are all, everywhere you see these sutures, what are they? They are where bones, right, have met with bones. Now, if you have a look at the example that I've given you, it's the skull. You don't want, what happens if the skull, the bones of the skull can move? What happens if the bones of the skull go inwards? What's right underneath the skull? My brain. So if the bone moves and it goes into the skull, it's actually going to damage my brain, and I don't want that. So what I need is I need to have a joint, right, that is very stable, and that's exactly what a fibrous joint does, all right? There are all these bones, but those, that, that joint is so, so, so strong that the bones hardly Hot, they actually don't, they're all they're immovable, all right? That was an immovable joint. Our second joint that we're going to look at is a cartilaginous. Can you see here, right? A cartilaginous joint, right? What does it do? Limited movement. So some movement is allowed, but we don't want to have too much. So it, that brings about stability and structure. Now, if you have a look at the places where we find it, okay, we find it in between our vertebral discs, my cartilaginous discs or intervertebral discs are cartilaginous. So the bones have slight bit of flexibility because remember my vertebral column is made up of those curves. So where I, it is strong, all right, but what do I also have? I have this slight movement available to me. I'm also going to see it here in my pubic symphysis, right? My hip bones, I have two hip bones and two sides, right? And they need to join. And here in the middle where the red is, that is where it needs to join, okay? My pubic symphysis. There we go, my pubic symphysis. Now that is, again, cartilage tissue that joins the two hip bones together in the front, right? There, but there's a slight bit of movement when walking during childbirth, but I don't want too much. I just want a slight bit. Now, my third joint is a special kind of joint. Now, what you're going to see now, all right, is that we are going to look at what is called a synovial joint. Okay. Now, these synovial joints, look what they're able to do. They can move freely. They are flexible, which leads us to the third one. They contain a fluid to keep them lubricated. Now, a synovial joint right, is a joint where quite a bit of movement is going to occur. So because the bones are going to rub against each other, what we're going to need, we need to have liquid in there, lubrication, and we need to keep that lubrication within the joint. Okay, and we're usually going to find this at the end of our long bones, that long bone that we looked at at the beginning. Now, there is a particular structure that we look at when we look at, right, the synovial joint. I'm going to give you two minutes, right, and what I want you to do is, Look at the questions that I've asked you. Number one, I want you to label the diagram. I know you might have a different, different one. I want you to have a look at the different, this, the concepts that we have. Why have I asked you to put a function next to it? Each of the structures has a particular function in the joint. When you have a diagram with functions, please remember the term that is called an annotated diagram. We've got notes on the diagram. 
Okay, so, and that's important so you can understand the role that each of the tissues plays, right, in how a joint is going to work and what makes it work best. You have got two minutes starting now. Okay guys, not such an easy task to give you, but I want to see how you coped. Now if you are looking at this diagram, maybe you can um, realize that it's a diagram of a knee joint. And what might have given it away was this little blue structure in the front here. Let me make it a different color, which would have been your patella. Okay, before we label, let's see if you can understand the structure of a synovial joint. A, a synovial joint, right, has to have fluid, right? The bones are going to rub together, and the easiest, the way that we stop them, right, from rubbing together that damages our body is we put a liquid in. Now, were you able to see that? If you had a look at the joint, the blue was a bit of a giveaway. Over there, right, that is the fluid. So where we have the bones meet, we need it to be lubricated. Now, we call this synovial fluid, all right, because it's found in a synovial joint. Now, when we have a synovial fluid, the water, it's water, it's liquid. Now, it cannot, it has to be encased in something. It needs to be enclosed. Now, can you see this? The water is in the joint and there's a membrane, all right, it's called synovial capsule. A capsule, right, holds something like when you take a tablet, sometimes we call a tablet a capsule because what it is, it's a covering with something inside. So now we've got this liquid, right, that lubricates so it stops it, right, from rubbing together but it's a fluid. And the fluid can't just run freely, so what do we do, all right? We put all of this in a capsule. We put a membrane, and inside we've got this fluid. But also, because they move right across each other, let's go back to our chicken bone. There is that white, nice, smooth cartilage that is going to be on either of the bone. Now, you can call that articular cartilage. Now, articular means to join. Articular cartilage. Okay. Now, what that does now, now, if you, if you have a look at your bone, 
right? You've got some the water, the liquid part there, and you've got the nice smooth highline cartilage. So remember, these bones can move. So when they move, they're going to rub against each other, right? And we don't want them, or we don't want little pieces of bone, right, to chip away. And what happens when we're older? Right, that cartilage goes away and the bone becomes exposed and that is how we get arthritis. Right, we get arthritis because our, literally our cartilage is worn away and we have the bones are then exposed. Then the next one would have been your bone. Right, so all of this okay, is to lubricate, to stop the joint. All of these, okay, so we've got lubrication to stop the joint from running together. And what is the definition of a joint? Right, it is two bones. Now, when two bones are joined together, what do we need? We need stability. Look there, two bones. What does a ligament do? A ligament joins bone to bone. And it makes that joint stable. Okay, so that we've got a stable joint. There we go, so we don't move around. Those of you who have ever twisted your knee or dislocated your knee or, bro or, or hurt your ligaments, you know that it's really, really sore because you have compromised the joint. Now, a joint needs to be able to move. Now, we know that bone is very heavy, so how is a joint going to move? Here we go. A joint needs muscle. And what does muscle do? Muscle supplies the movement. But a muscle doesn't join directly to a bone, because that would not keep on tearing off. So what do we have? We have a tendon. And the tendon's function is to join muscle to bone. Again, he has this word stability, right? To keep the joint stable. If a joint moves, it's easy for that joint to go out of place. So we need to make sure that the tissues around it that keep the joint in place. Okay, we're going to have another quick break and then we're going to get back to just a few more examples of synovial joints and then we're going to hit the questions. See you soon. Okay, another stretch again, get all the blood flowing, right, maybe had a sip of water, loo break, all of those necessary things. Let's carry straight on. Okay, now, you know, as biologists, we just like to divide things into groups and groups. Now, not only do you get synovial joints, we now actually divide the synovial joints into other smaller groups, depending on the type of movement they allow. Okay, you don't have to know the movements so much. What you do need to be able to do is just recognize in the skeleton. So I can often give you a question. Remember, you can't learn this in a box. You need to link it to the skeletal system. So I might get you, give you a skeleton. I can say, what is this joint? What is that joint, etc. Okay, so the first one that we're going to look at, as I said, I'm not going to get too bogged down in what movement it is. I'm just going to explain the more important thing is where does this type of joint occur in the skeleton. Okay. The first one is our gliding joint. And the gliding, as you can see, is where the bones actually move across each other. And that example over there is where the clavicle and the manubrium all right, meet. Now remember, it might look like the bone is joined to the bone over here. But if you have a look at the movement, right, gliding means that it slides over the bone in different directions. So that's the first one we look at. The second one, and this is a more popular one, so I'm going to put, there are some joints that are, are more, let's say more commonly asked than the others, right, and the hinge joint is one of those. The hinge, like a door, right, on the hinge of a door, and the example is here, your elbow, right, your elbow. Now, if we have an elbow, we know that we have a corresponding bottom one, and that would also be your knee. And that is, if I show you the motion, that's moving your arm up and down. Okay, if you say to me you can twist it, you can't because that's another bone. My elbow can go up and it could down, flex or extend, the same as my knee. And that is a hinge joint. Okay, that's a popular one. A pivot joint. Now, pivot joint, the only joint that is a pivot joint in the body is when the atlas and the axis, 
right? Can you remember this on the bottom, right, of my vertebra? My atlas and my axis must turn on each other, right, so that I'm able to turn my head. A pivot means to turn around a central point. Okay, the next one. This is not one that you'll probably have to do, is your ellipsoid joint, and that is where all your bones, all right, of your, your carpals over here, they join, they have like a funny twisting motion, right, ellipsoid, it's like a tie, like a little circular motion around the bones, the heads of your ulnus and your radia. A saddle joint, a saddle joint here between your carpals, and your metacarpal, you will see what it does. It's like sitting on a saddle, all right? And you can move forward in the saddle or you can move backwards. Okay, so as I said, that's why it's called the saddle. Your bones can move forward or they can move from side to side. Then the next popular, all right, popular joint is your ball and socket joint. So these are the two that I would recommend that you um, know better than the others. And the ball and socket joint very simply means, okay, the head all right, of a bone fits into a round socket. Now, unlike the saddle where forward and back, it can form a rolling motion, right? So roll, look at my shoulder, right? I can roll it around. When it comes to my hip, I can have quite the same amount of flexibility. So when it comes to joints, this is probably the most flexible joint. So what do we usually say, the humerus and the scapula? What do we usually, in layman's terms, we would say the shoulder and my hip. Those are ball and socket joints okay all right so let's see how would I ask some questions the very first question that I've asked you is a very plain and simple all right label what you see now if I have a look here what I need to be able to see first of all that it is a synovial joint a typical synovial joint if I have a look at all right, if I have a look at the picture, I see a lot of numbers, all right, so obviously I have to label. So let's see what kind of questions, all right, I'm going to ask. So there are three questions here. Give a suitable heading, right, because if I go back to my diagram, it just said consult the diagram or look at the diagram below. It didn't tell me what I'm looking at, all right, so that for now I actually need to say, okay, what is, what am I looking at? What are the parts, one to five, and state the function of parts three and five. So let's see if we go through the answers. Okay, the first one what we have to do, all right, oopsie, there we go, back again. Okay, let me find our place. All right, we have to label, we have to label it, and we have to give it a heading. So let's give it a heading. A typical synovial joint. Or we could have started with a diagram of a typical synovial joint, right, and we underline it. Now they've asked us to label 1 through to 5. So let's see if we can see what we need to do here. Number 1 is a bone. Okay, number 5, I'm going to go with the ones that sometimes you find much easier, is this Cartilage, so it's my articular cartilage. If you write highline cartilage, it is fine. It is not incorrect. Now we come to the whole capsule. The first thing I notice, the easiest one would be my synovial fluid. Now here is quite challenging because they've showed you, you're not quite sure Right, what they have showed you in the sign. So I would say this one, a synovial fluid, must always be right within a synovial capsule. And if you have a look at the structure on the side, it joins bone to bone. And that I would label as my ligament. Now, when we get to the next question, right? 
they want to know what are the functions of parts number three and four. Now, if I had studied my diagram with putting the diagram in front and then putting the labels and then putting the functions, you see it's a much easier way to study. <coughs> Sorry. So we want what's the function of number three all right, and number five. Now, as we said to you before, what does the articular cartilage there do? Right, it prevents friction when the bones move. Okay, so what is its function? Right, it facilitates movement. What is number three? The three is the synovial capsule. And now the synovial capsule actually makes synovial fluid. Okay, so the capsule makes synovial fluid. And what is the function of the synovial fluid? It's the lubrication right, of the joint. So for the first question, right, a nice, plain, straightforward question. The diagram was quite easy, nice to see. Okay, what other kind of questions? Now let's have a look. Now I take an x-ray. Now the same concepts apply, but now I need to look at what bones look like in real life and try and see if I can now see what the bones are and what parts I'm actually looking at. Now the question says an x-ray, you can see that it's an x-ray, it's of, okay, and it tells you it's a human synovial joint. Now that already, we know it's human and it's a synovial joint. Now having a look at that, you now need to be able to identify what bones are they actually asking for. Okay, so let's the first thing we said. Question number one, name the type of synovial joint, right, drawn in the diagram. All right, so let's go, we get to go back there, name the type of synovial joint. Now, I wonder if you guys noticed the bigness, bigness, oh, the largeness of that bone. And did you see this funny little one like monkey bars that we hang on? I hope that you saw that this was a hip bone or my pelvis. Okay, so if it was a hip bone or a pelvis, what kind of joint would it have been? All right, it is a ball and socket joint. Right, now question number two. State one location in the human body. Okay, it would be fine, right, if you said, right, oops, let's go back there. It would be fine if you said in the shoulder, but if you have recognized this as the hip bone, right, or the pelvis, then you should, I would suggest that your answer would be, right, the type of joint in the human body, right, the pelvis or in the hip bone with the femur. Right, question number three now goes back to describe the range of movement permitted. Okay, describe. Now, first of all, you would have said that it is fairly flexible. And what range of motion? Guys, come on. All right, rotation. Rotation. All right, fairly flexible, rotation. And I would have said there, a large range of motion. Okay, we can move it quite freely, especially our shoulder joint, if we had a shoulder joint, right? We have lots more mobility here, whereas in our hip joint, you want a little bit more stability. Now the next question, they want you to draw on the diagram. Now have a look here. It says, on the x-ray label. Okay, on the x-ray label. So they want to know a named bone on here. Can you see a bone of the lower limb? Yes. Okay, because I identified it as my hip bone. So it doesn't matter where, I would label the bone, right? And what would I say is it? It is the femur. Okay, now the next one is a bit more tricky. Comes to the hip bone, the hip is a bit tricky. Okay, and they want you to see where is the ilium. Now, the ilium is up here at the top of my hip. Ilium, the ischium is at the bottom. It sounds funny. That's like my monkey bars. If you have a look at the skeleton, it's almost as if you can take where your 
I talk so, and it's almost like monkey bars. You want to just grab the two bones over here, right? And you can like swing like monkey bars. And ischium sounds funny. So over here at the top, I would then label my ilium. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken an x-ray and here together you need to be able to look at what bones of the skeleton and then identify the different kinds of joints. Okay, another very a similar question. Another similar question on again. Okay, what have I given you? The skeleton. You see, you need to tie it up with the skeletal system. Now the first question that you are asked for, give the letters, aha, give the letters and names. As soon as something's in capital letters, that means you need to pay attention, right? Of the bones, as shown in the diagram, that represent, now, this is the catch, the axial skeleton, right? They want you to look at the, the bones and which parts make up the axial skeleton. Now, the axial skeleton, if you have a look here, you should see number B and number D. Now, if the question is correct, they asked you, all right, oh, we went too farther. They said to you, give the letters and the names. The letters and the names. Okay, oh, there we go. And the letters is B and the names the lumbar vertebra. Okay, number D, the coccyx or coccygeal, all right, the coccyx. So there we go, the axial. Can you see anything else? I can see the ribs, guys, can you see the ribs? But what I can't, can't see, all right, I can't see is, right, they haven't been labeled, so I'm not going to label them. If I look at the line over here, right, it's, it's probably joining right over there, that's probably my third one because it's for three marks. So if I can't see my line clearly, let's make it to there. Right, that would be number C and that would be the sacrum. Okay, so guys, when it comes to the question on joints, you need to link it to your skeleton. Right, be able to identify what kinds of joints there are and where we can find them on our skeleton. Thank you so much for joining us today and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio, bye.